All right. Th hello. This is a small introduction to orthopedic reflexology. It's orthopedic reflexology is a postgraduate course. It's offered at Natural Health Science in Greece, also abroad. It is addressed uh, to experienced practitioners. Uh, experience meaning that they have uh, have some have done some work on the feet, not necessarily thousand hours or two thousand hours of work as I hear at conferences. I think these practitioners are just trying to impress us and over exaggerating. But it it's very important that they do have some experience to make uh, discrimination. This will be very important. Like Tad, I always liked uh, the position of Robert St. John, the man who made the metamorphosis uh, technique. And uh, I've heard that during his seminars, he would never offer a certificate to anyone. Uh, so what I'm trying to say here is that uh, I will try to tell you what I believe uh, about reflexology and give you some sources and just uh, look at it, search it, and if you like, you can just call yourself an orthopedic reflexologist. But what does it mean? Uh, orthopedic uh, reflexology theory derives from uh, Hippocratic theory and other ancient Greek physicians like Galen, Asclepiades, and uh, many others. But, this, uh, but orthopedic reflexologists will study old and new theories from all schools of thought. And above all, he never thinks he knows it all. He will always try uh, to learn more and more. And of course, one more thing, he always respects previous knowledge and references it. I've noticed that it, even in our field, uh, we read something, claim it is ours, and we do not respect uh, the initial source. And uh, amongst older uh, schools of thought, Ingham and Fitzgerald is a basis. Uh, I say this because nowadays we have so many schools of thought, and it seems we have forgotten to read Ingham and Fitzgerald, and thanks to them, uh, we are here today. Now, going back to Hippocrates, Hippocrates uh, says, states in the passages that the opposites cure. So keep this in mind. Uh, in another two passages, uh, he speaks about massage in general and uh, his approach to the feet and their importance is uh, considered tripsis, anatripsis, which means massage. So. We, today, we say reflexology is different than massage, uh, but for him, reflexology was a part of it. Same, that's the way I consider it. So I would like to make a point here that uh, research, results from research papers claim that either we massage the feet or do reflexology on them, we still have uh, good results in both situations. It's my personal belief that, and uh, I always try this with my students to help them understand that a reflexologist can offer an excellent massage uh, to the feet, but on the contrary, I don't think that a massage therapist can uh, offer good reflexology to the feet unless he is trained to do this, which is something uh, very specific, isn't it? Uh, continuing, so through experience, uh, having accumulated experience from working on the feet, we will uh, know when something is right or wrong when it's not at the medium. And when we find this, this either being crystals or nervous tissue, uh, we work accordingly uh, to Hippocrates. But we must always remember that there sometimes we do nothing uh, because nature is taking care uh, of the healing. Now getting back to Hippocrates, he mentions four combinations. These come from, uh, because he gives examples of what happens when we use strong pressure or soft pressure, and then he gives another two examples on the duration of time when we uh, rub for a long period of time and for a moderate period of time. 
and uh, depending on how you make the combination, you have a different result. So we have to keep this, know this, keep this in mind uh, when we are reflecting the feed. Gallen, of course, explains even more these combinations and helps us understand that the combinations are not four, but they are actually nine. So I know it's getting a bit confusing, so in order to sum this up a bit, uh, I will use what uh, a friend, a reflexology friend from a forum of reflexology said. This is from Kay Sansbury, and she writes, the maps are all guides. Like many road maps, you can find how to get from A to B. But it's the trained reflexologist's fingers that truly find the way. And I would like to say that uh, this is the orthopedic way, and you must feel uh, and know what feels right and what does not, and follow this. Uh, orthopedic reflexologist, besides knowing as many charts as he can, uh, he must know the muscles of uh, the structure of the foot, this meaning the muscles, the arteries, the bones, tendons, ligaments. He must know uh, about the meridians, these being the Chinese ones or the four pairs of Hippocrates. Uh, first of all, he must know about zone theory. But there's a problem with all these maps. Sometimes it can get so confusing. Let's look at example at this, uh, this map with the heart. And as we can see, uh, there are from different schools of thought, uh, various reflex areas for the heart. But if I make a red square outline, uh, couldn't this be considered a zone instead of a reflex area? And I could work on this area. But also if I look at an at an anatomical map, I will see that uh, how the arteries are placed plantarly on the left, you can see it, and uh, this won't it affect the circulation of the blood also much better. Now, I would like to make a quick, you know, say something here. Many scientists and uh, skeptics about reflexology and even other therapists from other modalities accuse reflexologists of having so many maps. I would ask them to go do a Google search for dermatomes. As you can see in the picture, I have four different uh, maps of dermatomes, and not one is the same as the other. Isn't this something similar as we do? Of course, Inga Dugan uh, has given uh, an explanation once on this, and she said that it's all, you know, for commercial reasons, copyright to sell maps, sell seminars, and of course all these maps have to be slightly different. And then, of course, we can remember what my friend uh, Kay said. Um, and of course, there's another question about the accuracy of reflexology charts, and unfortunately, research states that uh, they are not a ma valid method of diagnosis and it's wrong and an orthopedic reflexologist will not attempt to diagnose at all. But let's have a look at another example. We can see that uh, in the anatomical charts and reflexology charts, the large intestine is uh, ideally located um, on these maps, either anatomical or reflexological. But when we see x-rays, specific special x-rays of the large intestine, we see that they do not follow at all the course of uh, the intestine. Shouldn't the reflexologist respect this and uh, do his thumb walking exactly the way the intestine is on every individual's body? As for uh, thumb walking, I would like to say that in Greek we call thumb walking tabia. And in, in Italian, this tabia means change. So in Greece, we like to say that uh, through thumb walking, through cabia, we change things. I uh, find it very nice. Uh, which maps uh, do orthopedic reflexologists use? Well, uh, as you can see on this picture, on the left, we see a medieval, uh, the picture is from uh, the cathedral in Nanangi, Italy, and uh, we can see that the four elements on the left, and these four elements uh, have to do uh, with 
the human body, they are represented in the four humors of Hippocrates. So the four elements uh, make up nature and the four humors make up the human body. And this is the bridge between the macrocosmos and the microcosmos. And uh, due to this, uh, orthopedic reflexology follows the mapping of uh, Hannah Marguard and, uh, and, a, and the mapping of uh, the Belgian uh, nerve reflexologist Nico Paoli. This would be anatomical topographical reflexology. That's how he calls it. On the right, you can see in Latin written uh, people's age, face, and disposition change with time so that their constitution is increasingly said to be theirs. Of course, we see Hippocrates and Galen speaking together. Um, the orthopedic reflexologist will respect also the internal doctor, as Hannah Marguard says. This was well known from the times, uh, ancient times of Greece and they would use this technique in order to make the ancient doctors uh, speak at the Asclepia. These were the ancient hospitals. And of course, uh, the orthopedic reflexologist must know how to look for signs and symptoms. Uh, but above all, as Nico Paoli states, the nerve reflexologist, she'd always tell the truth. And uh, so does Ingham, actually, in her very small poem, Find the Source Spot, and work it out. Uh, orthopedic reflexologists will learn about the nervous system, will learn uh, about pain as much as possible, um, because pain does not mean tissue damage, does it? And uh, another thing he must know is when to use the hands of the client, when to use his feet, his face, his ears. Understanding of uh, the nervous system helps him out on this. Uh, he learns excellent history taking, uh, finally, he will learn uh, on why does reflexology uh, work in general. He will speculate on this. Is it a distraction technique? Is it working out the crystals? Is it having to do with the, the fascia uh, or maybe muscle chains? Or as Peter Lund uh, says in a beautiful article uh, about uh, the tensegrity structure, maybe it's energy and tension. Is it placebo? Maybe it's problems uh, of the feet, uh, something that Dr. Locke from Canada would uh, try to relieve. And he will try to understand all of these and use them accordingly. Lastly, orthopedic uh, reflexologists do not use recipes as we find in reflexology books. He relies on his experience to make discrimination, to feel the feet. They always tell the story and he will work accordingly or he will do nothing by following, again, the laws uh, of Hippocrates having to do with uh, rubbing. Rookies will follow the recipe in the beginning, students of reflexology, and this is safe and it's good and it helps to guide them until they actually get experience. But I would advise uh, future uh, writers of books uh, to add uh, the following quote every time they write a recipe. Amongst other reflex areas, evaluate these following reflexes and work accordingly. Because when they give a recipe, I ask, uh, and I see reflexologists, they never question what they find when they approach the reflex advice. They just, you know, start uh, tackling it without discretion. And I don't think this is correct. Hippocrates would say uh, there are no diseases, there are patients. And every patient and is an, an individual, and he should be respected as that. All right. Thank you very much.